a lot of women have been giving birth by themselves, you know, and, and that's like a whole, a whole mind fuck. I don't even know, I don't even know what that would be like, you know, so um, uh, I'm all for doulas, I'm all for at home births, making sure you have a plan, making sure that, you know, you and your partner are doing these classes and, you know, doing these things together as much as often as possible. Hey family, I'm Omari Maynard and you're doing Life with Lakeisha on Living Her Truth. Welcome to the Living Her Truth podcast, where we have honest conversations about what it means to live a purpose-driven life. I am your host, Lakeisha Wooder from LakeishaWooder.com, the place where women receive the tools necessary to feel seen, heard, and supported while pursuing their purpose. And now every week, you'll learn those same tools through candid and transparent conversations. You know, um... And, that, you know, that's a real thing, you know, so making sure that, you know, um, just me being able to help support somebody else who might not have had the know-how, the knowledge, the information, know somebody who's connected, knowing somebody who I might not have the information, but knowing that I can call one person and get that, get whatever I need, you know, um, is important, you know, it's important. And um, I say that to say, after she passed away, you know, like I said, a whole bunch of people reached out to me. The community came in and, you know, supported me in ways that I just never fathomed. But um, <clears throat> it was interesting. People that I didn't know reached out to me, specifically two brothers, a brother named um, Mustafa Shabazz and then Charles Johnson. And I never met these guys. They just heard the story. Um, through Facebook and Instagram, and they didn't have to call me, but they called me and just, you know, let me know, because they, they also lost their partners due to the maternal health crisis, and, you know, just kind of letting me know, like, you know, like, bro, it sucks, you know, if you need anything, I'm here, here's my number, you know, if you have any questions, if you just want somebody to talk to, and I thought that that was super important, because, like I said, even though I have a ton of people I can reach out to and family who's there to support is different. I, there's certain conversations that I only have with them, you know, because I know that they know exactly what I'm talking about. They know exactly how I feel. And I felt like that was invaluable, you know, and I felt the need to make sure that I, you know, pay that forward to somebody because that's really that those conversations and those relationships that I've built, really helped push me through the worst, the darkest times in my life, you know? Um, so. That's, 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 that's awesome. Cause you know, even in my business, my self-awareness coaching business, I talk a lot about building, you know, a support team, you know, like you say, you know, having that community because it's, it's so important because yeah, you have family, you have friends, but it's a little different when you, you know, have somebody on your team that actually has gone through what it is that, that you have gone through, you know, where you can actually talk and let your feelings out. You know, my head, you know, my head goes off to you because, you know, um, I sit here and I'm just thinking, you know, how would my husband, you know, respond? Not to say that he wouldn't be an advocate, but I just think that he would be like so like out of it and distraught. Like, I, I don't know mm -hmm. if he could have emotionally been able to just be more of an advocate afterwards, you know, be, after experiencing yeah. a dramatic experience. So my head goes off to you for that. And I love the fact how other husbands who, you know, fortunately experienced the same thing, you know, reached out to you. So I want you to take a moment, you know, take, you know, uh, give a few words to, you know, husbands or um, men out there, fathers to be, what can they do to advocate before the death? Like, what can they do to be more yeah. of an advocate, you know, for the mother, their children now that can possibly, yeah. you know, prevent her death? Yeah, definitely. Uh, the, uh, the, the biggest thing is to be, to be present, you know, and it's, I'd say that, like, um, because 
like going to these like we didn't really necessarily do Lamaze classes like traditionally, but just I'm just saying Lamaze because you know that's those those are the classes we take. So like being present in the Lamaze classes, being present for the for you know whatever your partner needs is, is just so important. And I'm not just saying be present by being there, but really like being there and understanding that you know um your partner your, your wife you know your girlfriend she's going through so many things not just physically you know but emotionally you know mentally um psychologically and um it's hard for a man to understand this and it's hard it was definitely hard for me to understand it you know but you know just putting all kind of you know, personal self-serving feelings and emotions aside and really being there for your partner is, is huge. One, two, find information. And, and the thing is, is that nobody, especially if you don't, you're not in the industry, you don't know these things, you know, right. and that's fine. You know, you're not supposed to really, you know, but finding somebody who does is key and those people who know are the doulas and the midwives. So please, if you are planning to give birth or you're about to give birth or, you know, you're, you're um, in those early stages, make sure that you have a doula and a midwife, you know, on your team, because those are the experts. Those are the people who can advocate for you, who can teach you what to eat, show you what exercises you need to do, put you in the right um, position in terms of, of getting like lactation clini clin um, clinicians, um, um, postpartum, you know, services, you know, they can really just kind of help you through each stage of the birthing process. Um, but you have to, you have to, cause you have to have somebody on your team, especially nowadays. It's not like it was where, you know, you just do your thing, you know, you go in the hospital, you come out with your baby and that's it. You know, like there's just so many different things that are put into place to really, you know, bring our black and brown people down and just specifically people like the food, just from the food that we eat, you know, it's, it's, it's horrible. Everything is processed. Everything is manufactured. Nothing. Yeah. If you buy organic and I, I try to buy as much organic food as I can, or go to like those, you know, fresh, fresh markets as much as possible to the ones that it goes straight from the farm to the table, you know, and it, stuff like that is just so important because there's just so many things that, are in the food and those things are not, they don't serve our bodies the way they're supposed to. And you know, women's bodies are definitely affected by these things, you know? So, um, you know, with that said, you know, it's important to make sure that you, that you, that you, that you're present, that you have, you know, some experts around you and that you and your partner come up with a plan. Like, and when I say come up with a plan, I mean, like, all right, First of all, we need to be going to all these doctor visits together, right? Just so that they know that there's somebody else that's with this woman, because there's so many women who I would see going into these, you know, when it's time to get the, um, the sonograms and all of that stuff in there by themselves, you know? And it's sad, by themselves with two, three other kids, you know, with them, you know? So, you know, just being present and letting those, you know, and it just, you didn't have to say anything. Honestly, just your presence alone lets these doctors, nurses know that, you know, like I'm not gonna take a visual. I'm, I'm not gonna do, I'm gonna do my services the way I'm supposed to, you know, because I don't know what this next person might do. I don't know what this man might do, you know? Um, and also just ask questions. You know, if you can, you know, come up the night before, come up with some questions. If you can't think of something to ask, ask anything, you know, just, but just to make sure that your presence is known and you're felt. And, that your partner knows that you're there, you know, you're there for them. Like, this is not something that she's doing alone and you just kind of hanging out, you know, like y'all are really in this together. And um, another thing I mean by a plan is, um, you know, making sure that, you know, your bags are prepared, make sure that you have one thing that you need for when you go into the hospital, making sure that family members and friends know, like, you know, know the plan as well. Like we're going into the hospital, I might need you for X, Y, and Z. I might need you to cook for a couple of days. I might need you to wash clothes for a couple of days. I might need somebody to clean the house for a couple of days. Just letting people know and providing them roles in order to help make this process as easy as possible. You know, but, um, you know, it's, I say all of that to say once, you know, 
you've died once you've your water has broken you're dilated and you're on that table if you're in that hospital and you're on that bed if you're in that hospital um a lot of those things kind of go out the window because you know you just want your baby you know so mm -hmm. so doctors and nurses will tell you certain things that may not be true may be true you don't know you know so you just kind of going off of what the experts say so it's important to have somebody, if it's not a family member who may be in the medical industry, to have that doula or that nurse really advocate for you, you know, and it's important for you guys to have that conversation before, you know, so that once it's happening, she knows what your expectations are and she knows what to say and what to do. Um, but if you can stay out of the hospital altogether, then I think ultimately that's the best. Like at home births are, you know, we've been on this planet for centuries, centuries and centuries and centuries. Mm -hmm. And we've really just started going to these hospitals, um, the places where they need to, where they bring in injured people or sick people. And we're giving, <laughs> having, <laughs> bring life into these hospitals for the last couple, maybe a hundred years, maybe a couple of hundred years. You know, and we were doing way just fine, you know, without them, you know. So um, if you can have your birth at home with the professional, that will be your best case scenario because at that point, you know, you know, you're, it's home court advantage. You know, you can do what you want to do. You can walk around. You're comfortable. You're in your own space. You know, you've got the, your loved ones and the people that you love most around you, especially during this time in COVID. You might be able to get one person in the room with you, if that. You know, a lot of women mm -hmm. have been giving birth by themselves, you know, and, and that's like a whole, a whole mind fuck. I don't even know, I don't even know what that would be like, you know, so um, uh, I'm all for doulas, I'm all for at home births, making sure you have a plan, making sure that, you know, you and your partner are doing these classes and, you know, doing these things together as much as often as possible, you know, and um, you know, it's it's really you got to be prepared. You got to be prepared. You know what? I'm I'm glad you I'm I'm glad you said that, and I'm glad that you broke down what you mean by being present and what do you mean by having a plan? Because I think you know, for for guys, um, the fathers to be, I think there is a wrong uh, ideal or or misconception that the guy just needs to just show up, like mm -hmm. all you know, he impregnates the woman. And so now it's all on the woman to actually like deliver the baby. And it's just like, no, like we still in partnership. Like I still need for you to, to be there and to ask questions and do your research and be as knowledgeable as possible, you know? Yeah. Um, because, cause that's what it's all about because you're not going to know everything and it doesn't matter how much research you, you do. You are still not going to know everything, but at least having some type of question to ask because he can spark up a conversation mm -hmm. that can spark up other questions and also just really sitting down and talking to you know your your wife or significant other to come up with that plan like what yeah. are your desires you know be on the mm -hmm. same page have that conversation so when things are not going right you know the husband father to be can speak up you know, exactly. yeah. confidence to speak up. And mm -hmm. I love the fact that you said too, just even just having a man in the room just changes the whole dynamic. Because mm -hmm. as, as black women, you know, going into the, the office, um, pregnant and by yourself, I'm pretty sure automatically gonna think, oh, the baby daddy is not even in the in the picture. Exactly. <laughs> so exactly. we like, you like, know, like whatever. I mean, <laughs> it's real life, you know, like you know. You might be at work, you know, it might, you might want to be there and can't be there. You know, it's real life. It's like, so I get it, you know, but try to be there as often as you can or, you know, or even, you know, having somebody else who can go with you, whether that's the mother or sister or the friend or, you know, if that's the, if you guys are tight like that. But, um, you know, just having somebody else there because it, the whole process is, it's a lot, you know, especially for new mothers, you know, it's a lot. And another thing too that um, I was listening to, so Shimani's mom was had a speaking engagement a couple of days ago with grandmothers who have lost their, well, the grandmothers mm -hmm. of the, their daughters mm -hmm. passed away exactly. And then the grandmothers helping out with the babies. And she was talking about 
even going as far, which is important too, to research the hospitals that you're going to, because just because the hospital is close to you, and you know, that's the one you usually go to, don't, doesn't mean that, you know, that is good, you know. Check the um, cesarean section rates of those hospitals. Check the doctors that are giving birth, you know, because, um, you know, you could find a lot of revealing information and you, those, those type of things are really big. And if you know, will help, you know, determine the decision of whether you want to have your baby over here with these guys or over here. And, you know, um, thankfully, like I said, yeah, we did exactly. You know, we had a lo our hospital, we had to have, went to have one of the lowest um, cesarean section rates of the hospitals in the area. But, you know, I mean, you know, it, things happen, it, you know, but it helps. It helps to know, you know, it helps to be knowledgeable. Yes, baby. Can you turn it down for me, baby? <laughs> Say hi. Hi. <laughs> hi. <laughs> She's so cute. Yeah. down. You're welcome, baby. All right, go watch TV. Brian's gonna put it down for you, okay? She's so cute. In real, in real time. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. That is no more. Um, because even with um being on the the webinar with with Anna, you know, Anna mm -hmm. gave some really like crazy crazy statistics that mm -hmm. literally blew my mind. And you know, because she said that black babies are more likely to to die when there's a white doctor. I was like, yeah. what? Black yeah. and brown babies. I was like, what, like, uh, it, it sh never even crossed my mind, right? Mm -hmm. The way this world is set up, of course, it shouldn't be surprising to me, but it was definitely yeah. surprising to me to to hear that because, like you said earlier, you everybody expects to go into the hospital and come out with a baby. Who expects to go into the hospital and not come out with a baby? Like that's mm -hmm. crazy. What was yeah. some of the the what statistics that you come across doing your advocacy and research that just like blew your mind? Because we don't, we don't know. We don't know the statistics. Yeah, um, black women are three to four times more likely to face maternal mortality than their white counterparts. And that's just, that's just women passing away. So maternal mortality is when they pass away. Maternal morbidity is like near death. Um, you know, and, and and with those statistics, I don't need are probably I don't know because women, especially well, women, especially black women, they don't even necessarily kind of relate those two things, right? So maternal morbidity, like I almost died, you know, but I'm safe and I got my baby, so I'm good, you know. But so those statistics, those numbers are, are probably through the roof, you know. Mm -hmm. In New York City, though, alone, um, when um, it's, I, I want to say it's 12 times more likely that a black woman will pass away from having a baby than a white woman. You know, so in New York City, like, and New York City one is one of the richest, you know, most expensive places to live in, not just in the United States, but in the world. And then at the same time, all this money, all this expense, all these things that we pay for, they have the worst, <laughs> the, the worst statistics in terms of giving birth to black and brown babies. Um, it's, it's sad, you know, like I said before, you know, doula services in this, in this area, specifically black doula services, there's only, I want to say two in New York, in, the, in, in this area. And is there's only five percent of doulas and midwives you know that are african-american or, or or black you know so it's an industry run that's a straight industry that's run by by white by white people white women specifically um you know i mean i could go i could give you some more numbers but the point is is that like once you know, once we start monetizing things, because it's, it's, it's the business of healthcare, that's mm -hmm. all it is, right? You know, and <laughs> just like um, the father of gynecology, um, Marion Sims, J. Marion Sims, 
was trying out, he's the father of that site, uh, excuse me, of um, gynecology. And what he would do was pretty much experiment on women, you know, cutting their, cutting their clitoris, trying to figure out, figure out how to, and what their thresholds of pain are. And then, so this is why that it's, I don't even want to say it's known, but this is this is where the the fallacy of women have a higher threshold of pain than than white women or their counterparts comes from, and this is like I said, the father of gynecology. So now he's I think he told at the uh, don't get me don't get me saying the wrong thing, but I think he might have taught at the University of Virginia, West Virginia, or something like that. But like I said, you know, he would do these. He would do these clinicians with these people and they would all, people would all come because he was the guy, you know, and they would be learning from him and then spreading out and doing the same exact thing to our women, you know. So it's, it's stuff like this that, you know, where the basis of the healthcare system, the foundation of what they're teaching doctors, nurses is based off of, you know. And with that said, like, there's, there, with that said, it's, it's no shock to me really why these statistics are the way they are, you know, because we were their lab rats before and unfortunately we still are, you know, and it's not even, it's gotten to the point where it's not even necessarily even done on a conscious level all the time. You know, these are just things that have been instilled in people's subconscious to think that, oh, you know, yeah, she's crying and she's screaming or she's asking for this, but she don't really need it, you know, she she could deal with the pain. Like it's okay. She probably just wants the drugs or something like that. She probably just wants to, you know, like and and it's stuff like that 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 are killing our women. You know, it's it's so that's why it's just so important to one be informed, you know, do the knowledge, do the research, you know, and align yourself with people who look like you, you know understand what you're going through you know that's why it's so important to have not just a doula but a black doula if you can not just to go to have a doctor but have a black doctor and nurse if you can you know to understand that you need to go to a hospital where you're not necessarily just looked at as a number you know i recently found out and i didn't notice that hospitals based off of your insurance will put you on different floors right so if you have I don't know, if you have Blue Cross Blue Shield, you might be on the second floor, but if you've got, you know, Medicaid or Medicare, they'll put you on the third floor. So now all the doctors and nurses know that all the people who are on that floor have Medicaid and Medicare and they're probably, so they're, so they're basing their service, their services based off of the insurance. So they don't have the money to pay for this, so I'm not gonna offer this. Or I know that, you know, since they have Medicaid, they're probably black, so I'm gonna push the C-section or I'm gonna push, you know, the Similac on them or whatever they wanna push, whatever product they wanna try, you know? Mm -hmm. And they're doing this based off of, literally based off of the floor that you're on when you're in the hospital. Like stuff like that just blows my mind, you know? And um, it's not information that's not necessarily common knowledge. So you wouldn't even necessarily notice just walking in. You, again, you're just looking for service. You're looking for, this is what's happening. I need this service and because I have insurance or even if I don't, because they're a doctor or a nurse professional, they're going to give me the service and care that I need. That which is, is just disgusting. Yeah. That is disgusting. And, and of course that happens. And this is the United States of America, people. This is not a third world country that we're talking about. This happens right here in the United States of America because I think sometimes we think that well now us because we're living living the, the the experience but people that don't look like us they tend to think that oh that doesn't happen here that's that's yeah. that's not it's like yeah it is it is a thing you know how can we support you um with spreading uh, awareness and information and resources out there mm -hmm. how can we support you um so what so what i do and this is like this is why you know just creating a community is just so important and how things kind of work out so like I, I spoke about charles johnson and he's done a he's done leaps and bounds of amazing incredible things on the political side of 
of getting some reform some reform done for women and the black and specifically in healthcare. So um, check out Momnibus. She passed the mom, helped get the Momnibus bill passed and also the Kira Johnson bill passed. And um, these are bills that pretty much hold, help hold doctors, help hold hospitals accountable um, in their healthcare and provide it to us, you know. Um, so he's doing he's doing that on that front. I have another friend whose name is Bruce McIntyre. His, his partner Amber Isaacs passed away last year as well, and he's doing a lot of work behind trying to get more birthing, um, birthing services and more um, and more doulas and midwives, specifically in the Bronx, but in the tri-state area. You know, just to be able to, to provide and give people access, you know, because they don't have access. So they're doing different things on different fronts. And then I specifically, I am using my, you know, artistic talents in order to connect with families, you know. So what I like to do um, personally is, you know, if I just hear a story or if I connect with the father or family member, you know, I'll create a portrait for them of their partner. And, um, you know, I give it, I give it to them and, you know, just help tell their story, you know, just little things that I can do in order to keep their name alive, keep their legacy alive, but also, you know, let people know, like, this is, this is real. Like, I, I and also too, like, I, like this, it's an epidemic and it's an epidemic that people don't know about. There's seven to 900 women passing away every year, black and brown women specifically passing away every year due to maternal health industry. You know, like that's more than, you know, <laughs> people getting shot or, you know, black men getting killed in jail or, or whatever, you know, like, and, and it's it's so crazy because like I said, this is, um, this is systematic eradication where, you know, they try to just get us on every front, whether it's, you know, the school to prison pipeline, throwing our black men in jail for petty crimes, killing our, our queens, you know, in the hospitals, and, you know, really having these children raising themselves or, you know, just a raising with raising single family, raising a single family home without their mothers, their fathers, you know, and, and it, it's sad, you know. But um, I digress. You know, so what do I do though? So what, I, what I'm doing is also I'm starting a foundation called the ARIA Foundation. Um, the ARIA Foundation stands for um, the Association of Reproductive Initiative through healing and, and art, excuse me, through artistry and healing. So with that, you know, I, um, again, I, I'll create, create artistic pieces. I do art installations. And um, also, you know, just having, running more events specifically geared towards either you know, um, spreading the word and information and knowledge about the maternal health care system. Um, but, you know, also, you know, to create a platform where people can get this information just in a different way. So not through necessarily politics or not through necessarily, you know, um, brick and mortar uh, and, um, and um, holistic places, but, you know, using art, you know, as a tool to to you know inform you know to provide information to and you know to help people heal um so you know that's what i'm doing that's what i'm doing right now yeah. i i love that. and you know your your portrait that you did i noticed because i started following you on instagram and on instagram in your ig stories you painted a picture of um celeste ortiz and mm -hmm. you told a little bit about her story, um, yeah. why you was paint, painting her picture. And I was just like, oh my God, I was, I was just like, I was like, I was like too thrilled. You know, I don't mm -hmm. like to really like name drop really on the podcast, but I feel like we need to name drop this doctor with the whole, you know, with. Yeah, uh, definitely. You know, when it comes and to her situation. So definitely, and that's, that's, that. that is important too, because, you know, it's another way to hold people accountable, you know, um, Celeste Ortiz is she's a, a young lady. Um, she's from Bakersfield, California. She passed away in 2016 um, due to faulty practices by a doctor named Dr. Parks. And Dr. Parks currently still has his license. They, we're doing well. I don't. I won't put myself in there, but they're specifically doing a lot of work to try to make sure that he gets his license revoked 
the board mm -hmm. itself is really just trying to get it, um, uh, I can't think of the word, suspended. Or, and the suspension is really just an adjustment. The suspension is really just him ha having his information known so that people know that, you know, he has faulty practices, right? So Celeste Ortiz is one woman that I drew um, who has been killed by Dr. Parks, but also Demi Dominguez is another woman who passed away due to Dr. Parks' negligence. And he's also from Bakersfield, California. So these are two women that I've drawn, but Dr. Parks is known on record to have done this to seven different women, you know? So, and again, he's still practicing, he still has his license and it's it, stories like this are horrific. It's sad, it's disgusting. It makes absolutely no sense. But again, it just goes to show you how much care and self-worth that they think that we have for one ourselves and that they have for us give me two seconds baby and um you know it's 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 just sad you know so again just trying to use my platform in the best way that i can to just let people know like you know this is these to let people know that because you hear statistics and it's it sucks right Three out of three women are three, black women specifically are three times more likely, four times more likely to pass away. Uh, 10 times more likely to pass away if they live in New York City. 700 to 900 women pass away on a yearly basis, right? And they, the statistics sucks, but when you're able to put a name to a face and a community to a face, then it, it just hits a little bit different, you know? So um, that is, that's my goal, you know, to just try to, a line is to make these numbers real because these numbers are just, they're not numbers. These are real people, real women who have, who are not here anymore due to reasons that are easily preventable. And it's not just them, because <clears throat> that, you know, we focus on, as we should, we focus on the queens that have passed, but, you know, they're leaving behind children, they're leaving behind husbands, they're leaving behind mothers, brothers, sisters communities, you know, who have also been affected by them passing at such an early age or just at a time where they just, it wasn't their time, you know? Um, so again, you know, it's important that, you know, for me, that I try to make them, people know that like these are real women, you know, and, and that's, that's the, um, the tool that I have in order to do so, you know, so I just try to use it to the best of my ability. And you're doing a beautiful job at it. Do you have a website we can go to for more info? Um, yes, yes. So I do have a website. My website is called Artful Living. That's A-R-T dash F-U-L-L-I-V-I-N-G dot com. Artfulliving dot com. On there you can see, you know, you can see all different, um, pieces that I've created, you can purchase pieces, you can book events. Um, yeah, you can do a lot of a lot of things through the site, but uh, you can visit it, I would greatly appreciate it. Appreciate it. Um, and again, you know, um, you know, again, you know, just using the different tools and the different platforms, you know, so I'm just so thankful to have a website and just thankful for Instagram and you know, Facebook and, and those ways to really connect with people, you know, because, um, you know, that's, that is unfortunately, these platforms, the social media platforms have been used to break people down as well. But, you know, it's up to us to make sure that we use it in a way that to inform, to connect, you know, I, this is the reason why we're on this, you know, live today, you know, because, you know, you're on Texas and I'm in Brooklyn, you know, but you know, these social media platforms help us, you know, connect like, like minded people <clears throat> and really, you know, help each other, you know, make sure that your story gets out, my story gets out there, excuse me, making sure that, you, you know, your podcast gets out there and things like that are just, they're huge, they're important, you know, for the stability of, of us specifically, you know, so um, I'm just grateful, you know. 100%. I'm, I'm so happy that you say yes to having this to have this conversation because it's so needed because just from the 
the webinar um, that Anna did, my mind was just blown. And so I really wanted to sit down and have this conversation with you because I think the conversation would hit a little differently because you are a black man, right? So to have this conversation with a black man, is like mind blowing to me, you know, yeah. not to say that our, our black men, you know, wouldn't have the conversation. I just think that you know, black men that are out there, they're not, it's not televised. It's not, you know, publicized, if you will, you know, yeah. Yeah. Images on our black men to have in the media. And so if whatever I can do to change that narrative or show another side of a black, of our black man, um, you know, I'm definitely going to do that. That's so awesome. thank you so much for saying yes to having this conversation. And I'll make sure to put your website in the show notes so people, people can just go down there and just click and support. But before I let you go, um, just give us one book or Audible book recommendation because I am addicted to Audible. I love to listen to okay. my <laughs> <laughs> Give us one book or Audible recommendation um that you've read or listened to that has inspired you in some way oh man um sheesh there's a couple <laughs> um power verse force that's an awesome book um i've been reading uh children of blood and bone it's an awesome book and also the sequel. What's the sequel called? I can't remember the sequel right now offhand, but they have, so it's a trilogy. Um, and they've come out with two books so far, but um, the author's name is Tommy, damn, don't give me the line. Just Children of Bullet and Bone. Children of Bullet and Bone is an awesome book. I'm also reading this as well, The Intelligent Investor. This is an awesome, awesome book to read. Uh, just teaching you about you know the stock market and investing in in life it's, it's specifically geared towards the stock stock market but you know the, the 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 knowledge and the tools that they give you of course is transferable um yeah so those are the books that i'm currently reading huh yeah thanks for sharing that book. my husband recently is getting more into stocks and okay. trading, so i'm gonna have to make sure that he um, get that book and read that book. Nah, this is this is definitely a good one. So this one is the original was written by um, Warren Buffett's mentor. You know, so like yeah, he was like the man of the man's, um, and he kind of helped. He was the first person who really put like a systematic understanding behind the stock market. Like it's, things just don't happen for happenstance, and this is how you learn and read the charts and things of that nature and invest properly you know so um great book great book to read yeah. okay definitely definitely gonna have to check that one out yeah. so um one last question before i let you go it's a question that i ask all my guests but when describing the meaning of living your truth complete this phrase what is your third word to complete this phrase the words are self-awareness purpose and impatience Yes, I love that. Nobody has said patience yet. Yeah. Nobody has said patience yet. Yeah, you know what? We like and we live in a world where we have so much access and it's a great thing, but it's also it's a killer of dreams, you know? We want things to happen so fast. Like if and it's not happening fast and it's not right. Um and it's just not the case, you know. Um so we have to give we have to and I, i'm i'm saying that because i need to practice this myself we have to give ourselves time to learn the process and fail you got to fail a whole bunch of times in order to learn from it so you can succeed and nobody wants to fail everybody just wants to you know i did it i did it in 10 minutes i did it in 10 days I did it in 10 hours and it, it was awesome but that's just not how life works you know yeah. we got to with ourselves and understand that it, it, the, everything everything in life is is going through the process and understanding that the jewels are learned through the journey you know oh i love that the jewels are learned through the journey i love that i'm gonna have to put that up on my intention board because because <laughs> I, I know for me uh I'm working on patience every single day, you mm -hmm. know, because I want to, there are some times I want to hurry up and get there too. But then when I think back, 
you know, on life, you know, before social media was a thing, I realized like how I actually enjoyed the journey. Just yeah, yeah, definitely. It, you know, so I have to keep keep reminding myself of that myself yeah. um, to just like slow down because you just, you just never, you just never. Know. And really like my thing too is like how much you are up, right? So like my, like I beat myself up a lot in terms of, you know, um, not having um, necessarily all the things that I want, right? But when I look back from where I was at and one of the things that I've learned of where I'm at now, like I'm doing, I'm doing it. You know, sometimes you don't realize you're doing it, you know? And so it's really like, sometimes you just got to step back and pat yourself on the back every once in a while and, you know, always retool, refocus, keep striving. You know, but um, mm -hmm. I, I think that we think sometimes that there's an end date to the journey and there's really no end, you know, so just understand that if you just keep riding the wave, keep pushing, you know, whatever you want will come and that'll come and then you'll want something else, you know, and then, you know, you just go through the process again, you know, that rinse and repeat. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Absolutely right. I love it. Omari, thank you so much for having this conversation with me today. Thank you, Rakisha. I appreciate you. You're so welcome.